You open the back of Animation Magazine or something, look at the number of schools you can go to for animation. Um, I think there's, what, a zillion of them, <laughs> approximately. Um, a lot of those are, I would call, trade schools, right? Go and learn how to use the tools. You may or may not come out of that a good animator. You'll probably come out of it very proficient at using whatever the tool is that they're teaching and such. But, um, and then some schools really teach the craft. Right? And they're great, and you will come out of there being a wonderful animator. Um, I think what you don't want to do is go to school to learn the tools. Um, and as educators, we shouldn't be teaching students how to use tools, because whatever we know is certainly not applicable anymore. Um, any tools we teach them today are not the tools they're going to be using when they graduate in a year or two um, to use. And more importantly, the tools they're going to be using five years from now, ten years from now, are radically different than, than what we're using now. What you want to teach students how to do is how to learn to use tools, how to solve problems, and even more, how to think of problems that need to be solved. Um, and then all the, what are called the soft skills, right? So the hard skills are, how do I use this tool? How do I do this technique? Um, the soft skills are, how do I work with a team of people? How do I take critique productively? How do I give critique productively? Um, how do I manage my own resources to be able to be a part of that team? Um, the, the teamwork thing, just as a particular focus, whether you think you're going to be a telecommuter on your job or you're going to work in your environment or whatever, you, you have to work closely with a, a lot of people. And whether that's in a big AAA game, on a feature film, or a little indie project that you're working on. It's always with a team of people. Uh, and if you look at students who come out of undergraduate education, they might have done a team project once. They might have had to program with another person once. They might have done a creative project with a few other people once. But generally, they're building up their individual portfolio. They're learning the skills and such. They don't have the teamwork skills at all. Uh, and I think the, the education programs uh, that are valuable are the ones that are helping them develop those skills. Um, there's also the whole area of education of online versus live. You know, is there even a reason to be in a classroom anymore? Uh, and that's a really good question. We're figuring it out, right? So again, if you want to learn a tool, you can learn that online, and you can learn it online for free. Um, the the skills you're going to get with sitting face-to-face -face with a mentor, with a teacher, an educator, are much more about the communication skills, about the critiquing skills, and all that. And that is something that I think is going to be really valuable. But we have to learn in education how to make that the priority instead. Technology definitely creates constraints, but that's true with every medium, right? Oil paints create constraints. And they're a technology, if you look at it from that way. So the really creative people are the ones who figure out how to create well within those constraints without, without the technology or the, whatever the media is defining what they do. But it is constraining what they do. So yeah, it constrains it, but I don't think necessarily uh, in a bad way if, if you apply yourself well to it. So Tim Johnson, who was one of our directors at PDI, now director at DreamWorks, had a great line um, as our character animation group was building, which is, the computer is the devil. And what he meant was, was because it tempts you to do things that you don't want to do, right? And, and his whole point was, don't, don't let that devil tempt you to go down that path. You know, ignore what the tool is telling you to do and follow your creative vision. And I think that's, that's as true today as it was then, and something you just have to be aware of to not let the technology drive you, but rather use it to do what your creative vision is. So I think the reason that you see this increase in budgets and you see this increase in bigger, louder with 
possibly no attention to story or little attention to story, depending on your point of view, um, is really market driven. And that's market driven in that the studios now have um, a few things going on. One, the growth that they, they have been able to have in the film industry over the past couple decades has really been international expansion as opposed to growth of the marketplace in the United States. Um, so their new audience is by going global. So people in the United States buy four or five movie tickets a year on average, and that's been true since the 1960s to today. So we're not seeing any more movies than we used to. We have more opportunities to see them because of the additional distribution channels and such. Um, so, so A, the movie industry grows by getting an international audience. And the stuff that exports really well is science fiction, fantasy, action adventure, right? And to, to create those, because they're cross-cultural, right? Comedy doesn't work really well. Drama doesn't work really well cross-culturally. So science fiction, action adventure, fantasy exports really well, and that's effects driven. Um, so if you want to capture that bigger audience, you go for these effects driven films. It doesn't mean you can't have a great story, <laughs> but it does drive you a lot towards the effects. Uh, the other thing they're trying to do is attract people into the theater. And we have so many options for our entertainment now, whether it's our huge home theaters, uh, video games, mobile media, everything else that for us to make the effort to go to a theater, it has to give us something we can't get anyplace else. And the trend you see in the theaters is bigger, right? IMAX screens, more dimensions, let's go 3D now. Sound went from stereo to surround sound. I don't, a big theater now has dozens of speakers and I don't even know how many anymore. Big, loud, boom. And that's to attract us to get into the theater. Um, there's a limit to how much of that you can do, right? And I think we might be there at that limit, but Hollywood's full of surprises. Maybe it'll get bigger, maybe it'll get louder. Um, so, so you have that huge factor driving it. I can't believe I haven't been here before. That's just shameful on me. <laughs> but what an incredible collection of people from all over the world who are practitioners at at the top of their game. And whether it's technical or creative, uh, it's the best. And the ability to come here for a week, hang out with those people, really have everyone be able to take a breath, relax, focus on this environment rather than all the distractions we have in daily life. Uh, it's an amazing environment to, to really share ideas again and get caught up with people. Uh, what? What a unique thing. <laughs>